Okay, welcome everyone to our webinar today. Uh, today's update is with Good Baby International with products of Evenflow, GB, Urbiti, and Cybex. So today's objectives, uh, we want to be able to have contact information for Good Baby, international brands and key contacts, as well as providing information on at least three new seats that they're going to be sharing information on and discuss the importance of always following manufacturer's instructions and their guidance. So with us today, we're thrilled to have a return popular uh, advocate, Sarah Haverstick from Evenflow, and also Brian Witt, the engineering manager who also gets around to a lot of our tech updates and is a wonderful resource as well. So we welcome you, Sarah and Brian. And Sarah, go right ahead. We're anxious to hear what you have to share. Thanks, Kim. I'm really excited to be here today. This is always one of my favorite presentations of the year. We get a little bit more time to talk with you than often we do when we're at in-person events. And I really, really love the Q&A at the end. So please send in your questions in the chat box. Uh, I know Carrie and Kim will both be monitoring those so that we can get to them at the end. And I promise to save time for those uh, so we can have lots of good discussion at the end of the presentation. So we're going to get started. I'm going to do most of our presentation talking today, but we have Brian on the line. We're our two uh, internal CPST instructors for the company. So he's going to kind of jump in during uh, our Q&A at the very end of the broadcast. Words about Good Baby International. I think at this point, you know, we've been around and we've been talking Good Baby International for a few years, but there's always new folks on the call. So on the next slide, you'll see these are our four car seat brands. These brands all fall up under the Good Baby International umbrella. Evenflow, Cybex, GB, and Urbini. Today, we're primarily going to focus on Evenflow and Cybex. We have a bunch of new updates with each of those brands, uh, so that's where we'll spend our time. But before we get into individual brands, I wanted to give some um, attention to what we do it, in terms of education and community outreach. So currently, we've got about 40 certified car seat technicians on our team. It's a really broad cross-section of the company. We now have offices in Miamisburg, Ohio. We have production facility in Piqua, Ohio. We've got offices in Charlotte, North Carolina, as well as Boston, Massachusetts. So we'll be growing our technician team, I expect, this year. We already have a class posted during CPS month in May. Uh, so we do certification uh, classes, we host car seat checks, we do CEU events, we really like to help our community. But the big thing I want to call out is that basically our entire customer service team are certified as car seat technicians. I think there is one brand new rep who is really brand new and hasn't gotten in a class yet. Otherwise, all of our reps are certified and almost all of them have been through at least one certification cycle. So I want to make sure you know that when you're calling the company, you don't even have to ask to talk to a CPST chances are that person on the line is a CPST. Uh, so they know, they know the product, they know your language because they've been through that class too. They help with events out in the field. So rest assured that you're getting quality information, but you can always reach out to me directly. They know they can reach out to us. Brian and I were probably the ones that taught them because we taught most of their certification classes. Uh, so just like we say in any other certification class, we're their phone a friend. They know when they need to elevate something, they come to me or they go to one of the engineers to get additional backup and guidance as well. Uh, but know that you've got that information. And the flip side to that is, if you ever get information from customer service that seems just a little bit off, it's really helpful if you come to me and you give me that information and as much detail about whatever that call is that you can share. That way we can go back because nobody's perfect and we always want to improve the training that we're providing and we can always go back and talk with uh, the reps about what situations might come up. So just wanted to share that uh, on the front end, but we're gonna start today by talking about Evenflow products. And when we talk about Evenflow, we're really proud to talk a lot about Made in the USA. So with our Made in the USA, most of our car seat line is Made in the USA. And when we say that, we mean these seats are designed, engineered, molded, crash tested, and assembled in the United States at our plant in Piqua, Ohio. So we're really excited about that. 
On the next slide, you can see our full line of Made in the USA seats. Uh, it goes from infant through booster with lots of options in between. So hopefully something that'll work for you or your consumers. And then on the next slide, we also have an institutional sales program. Many of you are probably familiar with that and may use these seats in your community distribution programs. For those that aren't, institutional sales is really where we take a retail version of a seat and we strip it down to the basics. We change the soft goods to make them really basic. We take out any of those extra um, harness covers or infant body pillows, et cetera, and change up the lower anchor connectors just to be standard connectors, whatever we can do to take costs out of it. Because we know when you're spending your grant dollars, they have to stretch. And you've got a lot of things that you're focused on with your programs. So we want to make sure your dollar really can stretch if you need to purchase car seats. If you have questions, uh, you can always reach out. The email address for Patsy and Eve is on the screen. They'd be happy to send you a price list. And on the downloads right now in the webinar, you can download the current composite for car seats and the accessory sales composite. So that has some car seat related items in it as well. And my understanding is that will also be an attachment in the email that you receive at the end of the webinar. So also we have an advocate website and wanted to make sure you were aware of that. It's safetymadeeasier.com. This is a site for you. So we designed this to be something that was useful to you when you're working out in the field where you can get quick access to our information. You can always link that to the home screen on your mobile device if that helps you to get to the information. But you can also register on the site and go to our CEUs for CPS techs. And we currently have five CEUs available. So Kim, if you advance the slide, I think you'll see these are our five CEUs right now. They're all product updates at this point, but the one I wanna call out is the institutional product update. So that's the fourth one down. I just mentioned the institutional seats. We rarely talk about them. Even when I have 45 minutes like today to talk to you, we have too much new, exciting stuff in the retail side to talk about. And we wanna make sure that when families come to you, you know the latest and greatest and you're familiar with these new seats that we have coming out. So I don't ever get a chance to spend a lot of time on those older products. But we spent an hour in that institutional product update with lots of tips and tricks for utilizing any of those seats. So if that's a seat that you use, if you have a new fitting station or new car seat technicians coming on that will be distributing those seats, I'd encourage you to check that out. It is a full hour, uh, but whether or not you use it for CEUs, it could just be good background information for your team. So that's available for you on that website. Next, I wanna talk about our forward-facing usage requirements. This is not new information. I know many of you on the line already know this. We made this change a few years back. However, with the AAP updating their statement around rear-facing and forward-facing transition, I just wanted to reiterate and make sure you knew that we weren't changing anything on our end. We are still keeping a two-year age minimum for all of our forward-facing seats in the even flow line, and we feel like this really still reinforces what the AAP is saying and keeping kids rear-facing longer, really getting that message to families and making sure they understand that they shouldn't be flipping these kids quite so soon. Last for updates before we get to new product is the red tether. So this we brought to you last year. I think this webinar was actually the first time that I got to say anything about it out loud to technicians. So wanted to give you an update this year with where we are. At this point, the red tether has moved to all of our car seat line with the exception of Symphony and Evolve. So that happened at the end of August last year. Anything that you see with that date on the bottom of the screen, any date of manufacture after that should have the red tether attached. And I'd love to hear from you. So if you start to see this at your car seat checks when you're working in the field, let us know, was the parent using the tether? Were they excited about it? Did they understand it? Did it stand out? Was it something that they, they used it because they saw it there? Uh, we'd love that kind of feedback so we can share it with the team and continue to think about how can we help address this issue with parents not using the tether for forward facing seats. So I think that's all of my just random background updates. Now we're gonna talk new product and we're really excited with the launch of a brand new line of car seats from Evenflow called Evenflow Gold. The Evenflow Gold program has a few key features. So we're gonna start by talking about some of those features. Number one on the next slide you'll see, we'll have a 100 day trial for these seats. 
So if you purchase this seat and it just isn't working for you, it doesn't work for the child or it's not working in your vehicle, if it's within that 100 day period, we'll give you a full refund for that product. Additionally, with the gold line, we know consumers do not register product. And it's really important to us that consumers do register the product. If there's ever a recall, we want to make sure we can get in touch with that family and let them know what's going on with their car seat. So with the gold line, if you purchase one of these products and register it within three months of purchase, you will have a lifetime warranty for that car seat. Additionally, that lifetime warranty also comes with a crash replacement program. And then finally, the real piece to gold is we want to change what the consumer experience is around our Evenflow products. And part of that is the way that we're communicating with families. So that communication piece is really key. As I mentioned, our customer, ser our customer service representatives are all technicians. So we want to make sure that the consumers of the Evenflow Gold line know we're there. We've got expert advice. You'll see new things in box directing consumers to reach out to us, whether that's via chat or via video, so that we can get them whatever it is that they need when they're working with their products so we can help ensure that product is being used correctly. The other things out of box you'll see on the next slide, uh, we're adding a couple of accessories in the box. So these come with the car seats in the gold line, a couple of cling shades for your vehicle windows to help keep it nice and comfortable in the back seat. And then the seat protector mat that can go beneath the car seat that is approved for any of our even flow car seats. So that's one big piece. And then uh, on the even flow gold line, you'll see sensor safe technology. So sensor safe, we launched a couple of years back. Uh, it's a program that we are really still so committed to. We initially launched this to help give that reminder to the family that there is a child that is still in the vehicle. So we wanna make sure that we can help prevent some of those hot car deaths. And that's really still where that focus is with this. However, over the last couple of years, we've been able to look at this and say, well, what else can we do? How else can we help the consumer understand better how to use their product or give them additional details about their product while it's in use. So with SensorSafe, we've now upgraded it to include Bluetooth connectivity and a free app that you can use that also communicates with the car seat in the vehicle. So much like the original version of SensorSafe, you still have that OBD receiver plug, as you saw on the previous screen, that still goes into the vehicle, and that's what allows us to communicate with the vehicle. And then you still have that chest clip that also is now Bluetooth connected, and that's giving us communication between the vehicle and the car seat. But with that Bluetooth connectivity, we also now have communication with the app. The important thing to know here is whether or not the consumer decides to use and to download the app, they're still going to get the critical notifications. So they will be alerted in vehicle when they arrive at their destination that there's still a child in the vehicle. They'll still get those reminder tones inside the car. Additionally, they'll get the reminder tones if that child unbuckles the chest clip while driving. That's still going to happen in vehicle just like it would have with the previous version. But now, if they choose to download the app, they get a lot of other notifications. So these are a couple of the screenshots from the app. Uh, you saw on the previous slide, slide there were notifications, so you can enable notifications. If you're working with a family and they're using this, I would encourage them to go ahead and enable the notifications. We're not going to spam people with crazy stuff. Those are the notifications like a pop-up saying, hey, you've got to your destination. Let's remind you that the child is still in the car. That's the type of notification you'll get. Additionally, it will sync to your chest clips and to the receiver plug. So that other shot that we saw on the last screen showed connection via the chest clip. So it was how many chest clips do you have in your vehicle? It can communicate with up to 16 different chest clips at one time. They're all individually monitored via that receiver plug. On this screen, you can see you have access to manuals. And I'll say this, you know, while still in production, some of what you see on screen will look a little bit different once it's actually available and you have it on on your phone, uh, but you'll have access to manuals. You'll have access to FAQs. That's really great and key. And I know I hear from a lot of folks that use our Evenflow FAQs. I just posted a new FAQ last week. So we try to put a lot of information in those FAQs to help clarify what we have in instructions. And then on the right of this screen is the real key that makes the app so exciting. You can actually add family members. 
doesn't have to really be a member of your family. It can be anybody, a next door neighbor, anybody that you would want to have as your emergency backup. So these are the folks that would be notified if you left the child in the car, if you broke, broke Bluetooth connection, you walk away from that vehicle and the chest clip is still clipped, so the system still believes there's a child in that vehicle, that's when your emergency contacts are being notified. And these are those people. So whoever you set up and invite as a family member, those are the folks that are then gonna get a notification saying, hey, there's a child in this vehicle and here's the last known GPS location of the vehicle. So that's a really exciting piece. On the next screen, you can see just kind of what an in-app notification would look like. So we don't want to encourage distracted driving. That's why the really, really critical notifications you still get inside the vehicle without ever needing to see the phone. But if you are the passenger in the vehicle and you open the app, you would see things like the vehicle is in motion. You would see how many chest clips are clipped, if they're buckled or unbuckled. And then there's notifications about temperature. That's the ambient air around the chest clip around the child inside the vehicle. On the next slide, we'll start talking about the new products. So the first is a new infant car seat. This is the Secure Max Gold. So it's an infant seat, obviously, four to 35 pounds rear facing. It has a five position adjustable headrest with a no rethread harness. It has hip strap, multiple hip strap and crotch buckle adjustments. So it adjusts down really nicely. There's body pillows, harness covers. The base has a really nice belt tensioning lock off. But on the next slide, you'll see I really wanted to call out some of the base features. It has a load leg. We're really, really excited to start bringing load leg technology to the even flow line. Uh, this is something that we've wanted to do. The load leg is such a crucial safety feature that we think that this is going to be really great. Hopefully get it in front of more consumers. You can see on the left, there's some specific indicators on that load leg to help that consumer know if they're using it the appropriate way. So those indicators turn from red to green. Not to be confused with at the top of that base, just above that load leg, you can see the recline indicator as well. So you've got that recline indicator and then you have load leg indicators too. Then next we have the new Every Stage Gold. So if you've seen Every Stage uh, out in the field yet, we launched that late last year. Uh, now we're going to have a gold version of the seat as well. Uh, this seat is really designed to be an extended use product. It has a 10 year expiration and in rear facing mode goes from four to 50 pounds and 17 to 48 inches. You can see all the rest of the stats on the left hand side, but we really wanted to max out how long that child could use this product in rear facing mode has a 10 position adjustable headrest with a no rethread harness which is attached to one of the really cool innovations which is our in-seat recline mechanism so as you lower the headrest of this seat the kind of middle portion of that headrest area pushes out uh, and helps to push the child's kind of hips forward a little bit and allows the head to lay a little further back. So we're opening up the included angle and really optimizing the fit for the smallest children that would be using this product. Once you get to headrest position number four, it flattens back out. So now we're flush with the back of the car seat again and gives the child more leg room as they're growing. And then as it keeps going up, uh, there just adds more comfort because now we're flush like we would be with any other car seat as we move. Uh, so really optimizing the fit of all kids in the car. We've got body pillow, head pillow, harness covers, all of those pieces are incorporated here. They're all optional for use in rear facing mode. Uh, harness covers could be used rear facing or forward facing. The seat is built on an energy absorbing base and it's attached to a steel reinforced frame. So we've got a lot of additional uh, crash benefit there. There's dual cup holders and they're dishwasher safe, which sounds silly, but it's something important to families. We know as technicians, it's not the most important thing to us, but kids are messy and it's nice to be able to pop those out and stick them in the dishwasher. And this also includes our easy click lower anchors. So on the next slide, if you have not tried easy click, I would encourage you to find it, to try it. It is really, really a very easy install. Uh, so the easy click connector system has one larger adjuster. That's what you're seeing on screen here. That's the easy click adjuster. On the other side of the webbing, it's just a regular mini connector. So a regular smaller push on connector. So you've got both of those pieces. <clears throat> 
the easy click works as just a little crank ratcheting motion so you fold down the handle and then you just crank it back and forth there's no pushing there's no pulling all you have to do is crank the system back and forth and it achieves a very very tight installation what i want to call out on the right is that you can move that larger easy click adjuster to either side of the car seat it doesn't have to be on one side or the other it does show and you can kind of see it in this picture there is a this side up orientation for both of the connectors but as long as you've got those connectors in the this side up and the webbing is flat between the two of them you're fine to move it so you know ideally i would put it on the outboard of the vehicle that way you're not having to climb in the vehicle you can use it outboard if you change the seat and you go to the other side of the vehicle you can flip it to the other side so that you've got it still on the outboard side to really take advantage of just how easy it is to use at the bottom of that little tip i put a reminder i think a lot of folks that use evenflow product know that we often attach those lower anchor connectors with a little plastic lanyard so if you're moving it between different sides uh, you're probably going to have to twist that webbing inside that plastic lanyard which is totally fine so wanted to make sure you were aware of that while we're talking about every stage i wanted to on the next slide just give you the overview of these are all of our every stage platforms at this point we've got an lx a dlx and a gold version Big differences being the LX does not have easy click. That doesn't come until the DLX. And then obviously the gold has the easy click and all of those other gold features with the sensor safe technology, the lifetime warranty, and the 100 day trial period. And then because generally we have some friends from north of the border on these calls, I wanted to call out for Canada. You are getting every stage. You'll have every stage DLX. Uh, and the Canadian version of every stage will come with an anti-rebound bar. I say that not because there's so many Canadian technicians on this call, but because our instructions are harmonized between the US and Canada. So for US users, you will start to see the new harmonized instructions that include the Canadian callouts. So just don't be confused. This is just for Canadian use. So when you see that information and in instructions, that's who it's for. Uh, the anti-rebound bar for our Canadian SKUs will come in box. So it'll be there for the Canadian consumers. It won't be there for US consumers, but you will still see that in instructions. Then moving on and out of our gold line entirely, just back to the regular even flow line, we also have another new infant seat, the Lightmax DLX. And I am super excited about this one. We've had Lightmax out for a couple of years. It fits really small infants very, very well. So this is just an update to that platform. The original versions of Lightmax have a rethread harness, so you manually change that harness height. This version has a five position adjustable headrest with a no rethread harness. I know sometimes we get a little anxious about no rethread harnesses and really small infants. And I'm happy to say we did a lot of fit studies with very small infants in this seat and everything we saw looked really great. So that adjustable headrest did not affect the infants. They still fit really well and very nicely with their heads back in this seat. Uh, it comes with body pillow and harness covers, has the dual level indicator. Uh, the base has a four position adjustable recline foot. But on the next slide, is the really exciting part about the base. This seat comes with a load leg and the retail price for this seat is under $170, which is really pretty huge. I don't talk about retail pricing very frequently, but I think this is an exception because bringing that load leg and making that a more accessible to technolo technology to families, I think is a really exciting thing. Uh, this seat also, when you use it without the base, will use a European belt routing option as well. So next slide is the last seat that I wanna share on the even flow front and it's the Maestro Sport. Uh, not because it's brand new, we launched this last year. It's an update to the existing Maestro platform. So you've seen it probably already before and you may have heard me talk about it. Um, it's a super lightweight seat. Most of the specs are basically the same as the original Lightmax version, or sorry, original Maestro Sport version. The harness heights are a little bit taller, which is nice. So you've got a little bit more room for torso growth as the child grows. But the really big exciting piece is it is the largest, most ginormous belt path I have ever seen for a forward facing install. So I can fit literally my entire arm through the forward facing belt path, which is really nice, makes an easy install. And then again, on the next slide, the whole reason I wanted to talk about this is for our Canadian friends. And 
because our instructions are harmonized between the US and Canada, our US users will start to see this in updated instructions. For the Canadian user, we do want, when used as a booster seat, to have the Maestro Sport leveled for use. And to achieve that, we are shipping the seat with a foam block that's placed underneath the Maestro Sport. And you can kind of see where that placement is in the images from instructions. This again, the foam block only goes to Canadian consumers. So it'll only be in the box for seats that are marked with a C and are going to Canada. However, you will see this in US instructions too. So I wanted to make sure that was clear that you'll see this here. It does not apply to the US user, only applies to the Canadian user. And then last for Evenflow, I wanted to just chat quickly about our accessory line. Uh, we launched this about a year or so ago. We've got a full line of accessories. These are still non-regulated products. So they're still not actually a standard anywhere that is just all about car seat accessories, but we took them and you know did our own testing with them. When we felt like it was necessary, we tested with our products so that we can say, these are approved for use with even flow car seat and booster seats. So any even flow car seat or booster seat, if you have a consumer that shows up and is using something that's labeled even flow, it's okay to be used. And this is the bulk of those car seat accessories and what they look like. The one that I wanna call out per in particular is that under seat protector mat. If you are familiar with using Evenflow products and you've used them a lot, you probably already know that in instructions, we state that a towel can be placed beneath and behind the child restraint to protect your vehicle upholstery. I've had a lot of people in the last year ask me, is that gonna go away? That is not going away. We're not gonna change instructions. You can still use a towel if that's what the consumer wants to do. Now they just have another option. If they'd rather purchase the seat protector mat, they can certainly do that instead of using the towel. Either one is going to be fine. And the mat has two different configurations. Configuration one is on the left is pretty standard. I think that's how most people would assume you would use the product. Configuration two solves for what we don't want to see, which is that image on the right under incorrect use. We don't want to have a situation where that back is flapping over. And primarily, this would be probably just with that infant base, but we don't want it to interfere with the infant base or with uh, putting an infant carrier on top of that base. So you can flip it kind of in this upside down configuration for number two. You could also use that if you're moving a forward facing car seat in and you've got a kid who always has muddy shoes or whatever is going on, that might help protect some of the vehicle in that lower area where the feet would be hitting. Uh, but really either one is fine in whatever scenario you want to use them. So that's that for Evenflow. Now I wanna move on and give you some updates for Cybex. And the first thing with Cybex is just a little background on kind of Cybex's design principles. And really they look at safety design and function. The Cybex team wants to go farther beyond normal safety standards with attractive intelligent design. And the main functional purpose is to keep it simple. We wanna make things that are easy to use for consumers um, when they're trying to interact with our product. So the first seat that we're gonna talk about is the Eternus S. This is a brand new all-in-one car seat for the Cybex line. You can see all of the stats on the left. And again, I'll call out just that rear facing number, four to 50 pounds and 17 to 48 inches. Also designed for that extended use period, also has a 10 year expiration from the date of manufacture. This seat has a 12 position adjustable headrest, which is attached to a no rethread harness. There is internal harness storage. So when you move this to booster mode, there's some storage in there behind that seating surface. The lower anchor storage is a little bit different. It's underneath the child seating surface. So there's instructions in the manual about how you would lift up the soft goods and access a little panel kind of in that crotch buckle area to store your lower anchors. The seat is built on a steel reinforced frame and has six recline positions. Four of them are available for rear facing, two for forward facing, and then one for booster mode. There's rear facing and forward facing lock offs, magnetic buckle storage, which again, doesn't sound like a whole lot, but if you think about how many times you take a child in and out of a car seat on a daily basis, nice to be able to just take those metal buckle tongues and stick them up there to keep that harness nice and open. And then the seat also incorporates Cybex's Linear Side Impact Protection System, LSP. So this provides additional and enhanced benefit in a side impact crash. On the next slide, I wanted to call out a few of the headrest features because the headrest is a little bit different. 
It features Cybex's reclining headrest. If you've ever worked with a Cybex booster seat, you know that they've got that three position recline headrest and it's really designed to keep that child comfortable, especially if they're prone to falling asleep in the car. And if you think about that in a booster mode, it allows them to keep their head looking up, uh, hopefully keeping their torso appropriately positioned in that booster seat. So we added that feature to the Eternus S but the adjustment for that feature is up at the top of the headrest, as you see on the slide on screen. So at the top of the headrest, that's where you can kind of lift up the headrest a little bit and move it back into one of three different positions. But normally you're used to grabbing the top of the headrest to raise and lower that headrest to adjust the harness height. So for this seat, now your harness height adjustment is actually actuated underneath the headrest. So there's a lever under there that you're going to engage and then raise and lower that headrest accordingly, which will raise and lower your harness height. So I wanted to make sure that was clear because it is a little bit different than what you would be used to using for a no rethread harness. And then the next slide, again, for my Canadian friends, wanted to make sure you knew that the Canadian version of the seat, and yes, there will be a Canadian version, and we're very excited to finally launch Cybex up in Canada this year. The Canadian version will have the anti-rebound bar. Again, instructions are harmonized between US and Canada. So this is something you're gonna see in US instructions, but this only applies to Canada, and the call out is there on screen. Next, I want to take us through the Aton M, which is the newest infant seat in the Cybex lineup. Uh, the carrier itself is very similar to any other of the Aton series carriers. So if you've worked with, you know, the Aton 2, the Aton Q, you're going to see a lot of very familiar things. The adjustable headrest with the no rethread harness, the infant insert, European belt routing when you're using it just as the carrier has the LSP, all of those features that you're used to seeing with the Aton. However, this version, the Aton M, the base is a little bit different, and you can see that right off the bat in this picture. It incorporates an anti-rebound bar that's built into the front of that base, and then obviously has that three-position load leg at the bottom. The next slide is going to take us through a few of our load leg features. So you can see again that anti-rebound bar, how that kind of scoops up in front of that base. This features a full lock-off. So if you've used Cybex bases before that have had what we've called the belt tensioning plate, you've still had to lock the retractor with those bases. In this case, this is a true lock off. You do not need to lock the retractor. You're just utilizing the lock off. It does have a bead level on both sides. And the load leg is redesigned from the other previous Aton bases. Uh, in the past, the Cybex base, that load leg just kind of free floats underneath. And it was by design. We knew that it was kind of hitting you in the shins, but that was to make sure the consumer knew that that load leg was there and to make sure they knew to use it. At this point, we feel like more consumers are aware of the load leg, more consumers are purchasing the product because of the load leg. So this base actually gives you the option to fully store and lock the load leg under the base. So if you're transporting it between vehicles or you're taking it to a car seat class uh, to teach with it, it's not gonna hit you in the shins anymore. You can actually get it nice and locked underneath there. It is three position, it does telescope, it gets pretty short. I actually just installed it in the center seat of my husband's pickup truck and was surprised that even in that shortest position, even in a center seating position of the back seat of a pickup truck, it still fit um, and was able to still use that low leg. So that was exciting. Uh, you can also see on the left, we've got some proper use indicators. So you know when your carrier makes attachment, you've got a green to red indicator there. And we've got a couple of different indicators on the load leg. So again, that consumer gets confirmation that they're using the product the right way. The next update uh, for both Eternus S and Aton M is that we will also have versions of these seats with sensor safe technology incorporated, and you'll see those getting into store later this year. So the sensor safe version on these seats is very similar to what we just spoke about with Evenflow Gold, still has that Bluetooth connectivity, has the app that you can access. Again, you don't have to use the app to get those really critical warnings, but if you are utilizing the app, you'll get those additional notifications um, and you'll have access to manuals, to FAQs, to customer service so that you can get answers to the questions that you have. So excited that we'll have versions of both Eternus S and Aton M with that technology incorporated as well. 
Last car seat update for the Cybex side is the Serona M. This is was the first car seat or the first convertible car seat that we launched for Cybex in the U.S. We are excited to bring this over. Um, really don't have a lot of updates right now for it. Wanted to make sure you were still aware. It's out there. It has a 12 position adjustable headrest. Also has the magnetic buckle storage. Also has the LSP and the steel reinforced frame. This one has 10 recline positions. It really gives you a wide range of options for rear facing and forward facing recline if that's something that you're looking for. What I wanted to do with Serona M is just give a little tease that we will have some exciting updates for this seat later this year. Uh, so you'll just have to check back a little bit later to see what else we have going on uh, for this platform. And the last slide for the Cybex team is just our full car seat lineup. I just wanted to give you an idea of uh, what seats we have available across all of our different uh, brands. So Kim, if you can move to that next slide. There we go. You can see the infant seats. Uh, we've got the one convertible and the one all-in-one and we still have a couple of boosters in the US. We did take the X fix out. So you just got the Q2 fix and the M fix for booster uh, options right now. Uh, so you can see what we have available. We're only just missing that combination category, but otherwise we've got all of the car seat categories covered with the Cybex team now. So now before we move into the Q&A, and I'm trying, I keep looking at the clock, I'm trying to make sure we have lots of time for Q&A, I wanted to go over a couple of technical updates. Again, if you're familiar with using our products, these aren't gonna be new information, but there's always new people on the line. So I wanted to make sure, because these are so frequently asked that we covered these as well. So we'll start with lower anchor borrowing. Center seating position, everybody wants to install their car seat in the center, everybody wants to install their car seat with lower anchors across all of our brands, so that's Evenflow, Cybex, GB, and Urbini, we allow center latch borrowing installation as long as the vehicle instructions allow you to do it, and those outboard anchors are spaced 11 to 20 inches apart, no less and no more. It needs to be within that window. At the bottom of the screen, you can see our call out for the Evenflow sure latch. This was our original self-retracting lower anchors. If you've worked with those before, you can see in that image inset on the right, uh, the release mechanism is like a trigger underneath that connector. And especially when you're in these center seat configurations, we wanna make sure that that whole connector and that release button in particular aren't contacting or interfering with vehicle buckle hardware. So what we don't want to see is what's on screen in that little inset call out. Uh, this is in any of our affected instruction manuals, and it's also called out in the latch manual too. If you have your pretty lavender latch manual, it was in the last version of the latch manual as well. Next, we're going to chat about inflatable seat belts. Inflatable belts always come up. People are often asking questions about that. And our position here also has not changed across all of our brands. Inflatable belts may not be used with harnessed car seats. So that's any harnessed car seat. You cannot use inflatable belts. If you're in a situation, we say use lower anchors. If there's lower anchors available and if the child is within the lower anchor limit for use, move it to another seating position. So often those inflatable belts are only in the outboard seating positions. If you can move that car seat to the center seat or if you can move it maybe to the third row of the vehicle, move it someplace else. On the booster seat side, for even flow, we do allow inflatable belts, but for Cybex, we do not allow inflatable belts. And we don't do that to make you crazy and try to make you remember a lot of nonsense, but it's really very specific. I mean, it has to do with the design of the shoulder belt guides and the design of those inflatable belts. If you have never touched an inflatable belt, no worries, you will know exactly when you see one. Not only does the latch plate look different, but the actual belt itself, the webbing is much thicker than what you would see with a traditional seat belt. So you'll know right away you're working with something that's a little bit different. And in terms of booster allowance, we wanna make sure that that belt is going to work with the belt guides that we have attached to the booster seats. So that's where you see that difference in brands and what we're comfortable with as a company. And the last update that I want to talk about are rolled towels and pool noodles. Those come up a lot and they often come up on the even flow side. I've very frequently here, oh, even flow doesn't allow uh, pool noodles. They only or they prefer rolled towels. We only address rolled towels in even flow um, instruction manuals 
primarily because in the middle of January, it might be a little challenging for some consumers to find a pool noodle. And especially for our friends in northern Minnesota or North Dakota, where even Brian was saying they've got six to eight inches of snow in Ohio right now you might not be able to run out to the store and get yourself a pool noodle this time of year. So we put towels in there because we think that's what's most accessible for consumers, but you can treat that interchangeably. We allow either one. The only big call out is if you're using a rear facing only infant seat and it has a base and it has an adjustable base, we want you to use that reclined foot on the base first. If that's not giving you the amount of recline you need, at that point, you can store that foot and then add your noodles or add the rolled towel, whatever it is that you're going to use, but not use both at the same time. And then the only other call out on this front I'll make is, you know, just one of those always follow what's in instructions, because on the next slide, you'll see what you don't normally see, which is the use of a rolled towel in a forward facing, and in this case, it's a booster mode installation talked about leveling the booster seat for the Canadians in the Maestro Sport. This is a U.S. seat. This is the Evenflow Safe Max all-in-one. These are from U.S. instructions. This applies to U.S. consumers. We would like you to level that seat in booster mode. If, according to you know our certification curriculum, you would never put a rolled towel in front of in a forward-facing orientation like this. It would only be used rear-facing. But this is one of those scenarios where we say over and over and over again when we teach that certification curriculum, you need to refer to what the vehicle manufacturer or the car seat manufacturer is saying. And in this case, with what we want you to do with our seat, it means that you would use this in this forward facing booster mode configuration. So just wanted to call that out. It's something that's a little quirky and a little bit different. Again, we don't try to do things to annoy you, uh, but wanna make sure that you're aware of some of these things that just are a little bit different. So with that, uh, I want to say thank you for being you. Thank you for loving car seats. Thank you for being really committed to working on child passenger safety in your communities. We know that you're making a difference. Please feel like you are appreciated and you're making a difference every day. Uh, I'll call out the two cute kids in the middle with the little hearts. Those belong to me. Uh, the rest of them are other kiddos on our car seat team. So thanks so much for everything that you do. And as a show of thanks, we want to give away some car seats today. So three lucky participants on the webinar today will receive the Evenflow Every Stage DLX. This is available for U.S. or Canadian residents. So anybody in the U.S. or Canada, sorry if there's any folks from other countries on the call. Uh, the winners will be announced this afternoon on the Safe Kids certification page. Make sure you like their page. There's always good information there too. So that's all there for you. And then as promised in our objectives, here is our contact information. So please know you can reach out to me at any time. I love to hear from you. Good, bad, and different questions. I don't care what it is. Send me emails. Let me know what's happening. Uh, here definitely to help you out. Institutional sales information is on there too. So if you have questions for that team, they are a great resource. They can answer those sales questions way better than I can. Parent link again, certified car seat techs on that team. Additionally, we do have a tech discount for the Cybex brands, and I'm excited to say after having a thousand people ask me regularly, we are going to start a tech discount for Evenflow products as well on that retail side. So if you're interested, shoot me an email. Uh, it will be some type of coupon code on our website. We were still working through it, uh, so it might not be ready quite this very second, but it will be ready very, very soon. So you can reach out to me for that information too. So I think we have time for questions, Carrie. Good, because as you know, we have a lot of them. Um, and for those of you that asked questions, if I don't ask your specific question or it, it doesn't come up, you do have their contact information. Um, we've got a lot of questions and I'll do my best to try to combine them. So let's start with a question from Danielle. Um, first of all, yay for the new red tether, um, tether hardware. Um, she wants to know if the current tether extenders can be used with the new tether hardware. Yes, I'll let Brian correct me if I'm wrong on that, but they can be used either way. So if you need a tether extender, for those that don't know, you know, if you've got a situation where your current tether just isn't reaching, maybe in the back of a minivan, et cetera, uh, we do have a tether extender. You can get that from customer service, um, but it's compatible with either of the tethers. Cool. The metal hook okay. did not change. Brian is sending me a, a chat message right now. So definitely compatible. Nothing changed there. Okay. 
Um, Monica uh, has a question. We actually have a couple of questions about the gold program, so I'm going to focus on that for a minute. Um, after the 100-day trial, what do you do with the car seat once it's returned? That's a very good question, and I'm going to chat with the team. I imagine there will be a lot of recycling. I mean, we go through a lot of car seats. If you think about all of the car seats that we utilize in testing and sled testing on a regular basis as we're launching new product, we recycle a lot of plastic components and a lot of just general components for car seats. So I imagine that the marketing team has a plan in place for what they would do with those products, um, but I'd have to double check with them to see what that is. Okay, we had a bunch of questions about pricing on the gold line. Um, everything from a specific, what's the price on a secure max gold to what is the retail cost of the gold line. Can you provide some information on pricing uh, for your products in general and then the gold line? I sure can. Well, I can start with gold. So secure max gold, which is that infant car seat, uh, is $219.99. Both of the seats in the gold line are only available via evenflowgold.com. So that's the updated website that's just going to be for that gold platform. And that's where you would get those products. Uh, so that one will be available. It's a, Both of them are available for pre-order right now. Secure Max will be shipping out in early February. Every stage gold is $279.99. And that one's going to ship out at the end of January. Did you want more pricing than that? <laughs> I guess if they want more pricing, they could they could email you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's and for everything, you know, there's a an MSRP and then there's different um, codes for different seats. Um, there, Parsa has a question about. Um, well, he wants to know if you can elaborate a little bit more about your crash replacement program. So again, um, I'll have to defer back to marketing. So my understanding for this is you qualify for the crash replacement with the gold products if you register that product within three months of purchase. So we're really trying to direct people to register the products so that we can get in touch with them if there's ever a recall. So at that point, if you're qualifying for the lifetime warranty because you purchased that product off our website and you registered it within three months, then you would qualify for the crash replacement. You know, just like anything else, we would direct consumers if you've got a question after a crash and you want to know if your product should be replaced to call customer service because they're really very well adept at answering those questions at understanding you know when you're going to be replacing that product so in that case especially for those gold and for that crash replacement program the consumer would need to call customer service and at that point they would determine when they would replace the product so speaking of registering, Gwendolyn had a really interesting question. How do you feel about double registration? So families that register their seats online and also with a postcard, um, does, it, does it impact you? Is it good? Is it bad? What's going on with that? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Um, I don't know that I've ever been asked that one before. And um, I think we would just be thrilled that people were registering the product to start with. Uh, you know, we get all of the postcards come in. Online registration is really ideal. You know, that's definitely easier for the team. It, as you can imagine, those postcards, when they come in, they're manually entered and they might be smeared, smudged, whatever happened in uh, the process between getting from point A, their, that person's mailbox to point B, our consumer uh, resource center. So, you know, there's definitely going to be, I, I just can't even imagine a consumer would do both. I don't think it would be an issue because it all goes into the same database. And I know our customer service reps would love, love, love for people to really focus on online registration. Great. Well, looking at the page that's up now with institutional sales, Anne wants to know if it's required that institutions have a CPST on staff in order to take advantage of those um, purchases. Nope, uh, no requirement there. So Patsy and Eve can definitely help them through that and uh, work with them on the products that they might need. So if they have questions about what seats would be appropriate, you know, hopefully if you're distributing seats in the community, a technician is distributing them. But often there's some kind of administrator type role who is the one doing the ordering and handling the billing and the purchasing and all of that piece. So you don't have to have a car seat technician around um, to be able to take advantage. There is, and Brian is reminding me, uh, you know, chat with Patsy and Eve about your individual situation. They generally have a do, they do have a minimum order requirement um, because it is a bulk order purchase, but chat with Patsy and Eve always, even if you just need a few things with a little bit amount of grant money, they're usually willing to work with you. Okay. Um, 
we had a couple people that really like sensor safe, um, but Lanny has a question. She wants to know if Evenflow and Size App can run on the same app. So that's a very good question, and it is the same app. So depending on what product you register is, you know, how your app is going to look. So if you initially register with a Cybex product, you're going to see the Cybex manuals, you're going to see the Cybex FAQs. Likewise, if you're registering Evenflow, you're going to see both. That was my question this week was if I registered an Evenflow and a Cybex. I mean, in the real world, probably there aren't going to be a lot of consumers that have both an Evenflow and both a Cybex product. So probably there aren't a lot of consumers that would necessarily be affected in trying to use both at the same time. And our team was going back to work to see if you could indeed select both and have both Evenflow and Cybex manuals show up at the same time. Um, you know, for us as technicians, it would be great if we could do that. It would be nice to have access to all of that in one place. So we are working on that. We're looking to see, you know, what would happen. But we just don't think in a real world scenario, we don't know that those consumers would really overlap. Do you find that consumers are pretty brand specific? So if they have an even flow, they'll pretty much stick with even flow. Good baby, good baby, Cybex, Cybex. Uh, I don't know if that's always, always the case, but I think, you know, they're just the seats uh, to be just very blunt. They're just at very different price points. So the Cybex seats tend to be much, much more expensive where even flow tend to be at a more accessible price point for families. So um, probably the same consumer isn't looking at the same seats. Uh, but I do think, you know, there's a fair amount of brand loyalty out there and we all want, you know, to get that consumer hooked in from the beginning. We want you to love our stuff from the beginning and then want to continue to use our products throughout your child's need for using a car seat. Okay, and um, we do have a couple of questions on your rear facing only seats. Um, the first one is from Melania and she wants to know how much overhang uh, is allowed um, on your new RFOs. So on the seats that have load legs, and this is across the board for both brands, Evenflow and Cybex, uh, you, as long as you're utilizing the load leg, it's okay to have overhang. So whatever amount of overhang you have at that point is okay. If you are not using an, a load leg, so on the previous versions of Lightmax that don't have load legs or any of our other Evenflow infant car seats, or if you just can't use that load leg and you need to store it in that position, uh, we follow 80-20 guidance. So you can have up to 20% hanging off. The thing I will call out is if you've worked with a light max base, you'll see that the base itself is a little bit different and the footprint of the base, not all of it is touching your vehicle seat. So you're going to count that 80-20 only from the areas that would actually be in contact with the vehicle seat. It kind of scoops up at the back and there's another inch or two that hangs over at the top. That wouldn't count towards your 80-20 if that makes sense. Okay. Um, the second question was from Jillian, and she was wondering if your RFOs still require an inch and a half of space uh, between the uh, back of the car seat and the front driver or passenger seat. Yep, I love this question. It comes up, I think, every webinar, and it's a good one. So yes, we do require an inch and a half of space. It only applies to rear-facing only seats, and it only applies in outboard seating positions when you're putting that infant car seat directly behind one of those front vehicle seats. The reason being rear impact crashes. When we know this comes up on in the news periodically, the front vehicle seats break in certain types of rear impact collisions. And we want to make sure that those infant car seats that don't have quite as much structure as a larger convertible car seat, we want them to be able to rebound out of the way before potentially there would be any interaction with that front vehicle seat. So it is a requirement on the even flow side. Um, I would be surprised if we ever took that out of our instructions, but you know, stranger things could happen at some point. Uh, but that is what it is. And that is the reason for it uh, on most of our seats. And I'll say on the light max right now, since we talked a bit about light max today, you can use that handle, the carry handle in the upright position. That was a retroactive change in terms of um, we used to require that handle to be behind the child's head. Now you can keep it in that upright position. So you can use that. There's an FAQ on our website that notes that it is a retroactive change. So families can do that if they want now. So that gives you a little bit more space on the embrace and older one of our rear facing only seats. You can put the handle in the full forward position as like an anti rebound bar up front. Um, and that gives you a lot more space as well to work with if you need to. 
Well, I'm so glad you mentioned anti-rebound bar because we had so many questions <laughs> from technicians that were interested in wondering, you know, can they get the anti-rebound bar for use in the United States? Is it allowed? How do they do it? Are you thinking about making it standard? So many questions on ARBs. I'm good. I anticipated a lot of questions on that. So I'm glad that they came in uh, and I'll say a few different things about it. Number one, the rebound standard in Canada is different than the US. So the product, um, and this would be the every stage, every stage, or I guess um, the Eternus S on the Cybex side, both of those products meet US standards and meet what we need to do here uh, without the use of an anti-rebound bar. So both products were launched in the US before we completed testing in Canada and were totally fine to be used as is. Uh, the Canadian rebound standard is different and with the Canadian rebound standard, we're adding in that anti-rebound bar that is required for use in Canada, comes out of the box for Canada. So I ask marketing, you know, will we be adding this to U.S. seats? Will it be an option? And the answer I got back was we are considering it for U.S. seats. So what I would say to technicians out there who are really interested in this feature, send me a note, shoot me a line. Let me know this is something you'd really love to see because I'd love to be able to show marketing that there is an interest for this in the U.S. market as well and see if that's something that we could certainly start to add to those products too. Okay. So a little bit to that, we also had a bunch of questions about the foam uh, for the to make the booster seat upright. Is that foam bar available for purchase in the United States? And if so, would it be allowed with a U.S. version of the car seat? So that's Maestro Sport, um, and that's a booster mode situation. And I'll let Brian either type me something or jump in if he wants. I would say that's probably not something that we would ever have available, just because that is really a specific testing scenario, and it is specific to Canada. And at this point, uh, we haven't included any leveling instructions on the U.S. side, so there really wouldn't be a need for the U.S. consumer to use that. Brian, do you have anything else you'd want to add on that? It kind of goes to the same logic as you were saying about the U.S. and Canadian rebound bar. It's that leveling block is necessary because there's some nuances of how the Canadian booster test is done and how the U.S. test is done. It's less straightforward and less easy to explain than the rebound requirement that I think people do understand. And the re we've done uh, similar things in the past where we've said that you need to level your seat. You mentioned the symphony. It's just the way um, that worked with the Maestro Sport that it was kind of a pain to level that seat without having something there to help. So we're kind of doing the same thing as we've always done or we've done in the past with other seats to level that seat in booster mode in Canada. And we've just added a thing in the box to help with that. So it's not so much of a pain. Okay. Um we did, I know we're running out of time, but we did have a, a few people that had questions about um, when you're using uh, some of your car seats in booster mode, uh, can you go ahead and use the lower anchors and or tether to secure it in position? Yes, you may. So for any of our products, the call out that we would make, and this again goes across the lines, but I'll come back to Cybex in a second. For Evenflow, um, the only real call out is you want to make sure number one most important thing with booster seats is that that lap shoulder belt fits appropriately and in some situations your lower anchors may be offset so we don't want to put that booster seat in a position where it's going to affect the belt fit but otherwise totally fine to take that combination seat or all-in-one seat or whatever seat it is you're using and still utilize lower anchor and tether when you're using it as a booster the difference with Cybex is uh, the dedicated boosters on the Cybex side have rigid latch. So with rigid latch, I mean, you have to put it in a seating position that's gonna be 11 inches apart. So you wouldn't have that issue potential where you might have something offset and that belt might not fit appropriately, um, but you could only place that in a seat that has standard latch spacing at 11 inches. And latch limit is not relevant. That's what Brian was noting too. So yeah, just remember, you know, lower anchor limits don't apply for booster seats. When you're using a seat in booster mode, your seatbelt is taking those crash forces. So you can certainly use them, just caution around making sure that belt is appropriately positioned. Okay, well, we have a bunch more questions, but we're out of time. So if you did ask a question and we didn't get to ask it today, you do have the contact information on your page. Um, and with that, I'm going to kick it back to Kim. 
Um, but I also want to thank everybody, including our, our wonderful speaker and backup, Brian, <laughs> for today's webinar. Back to you, Kim. Very good. Thank you, Carrie, and thank you, everyone, for your great questions. I know uh, not all of them were answered, but again, you have the uh, email for Sarah. You can give her uh, an email, and I know she'll get back to you as, in a timely manner. Uh, Sarah, Brian, thank you so much for the information that you've shared. And uh, as techs that are out there listening and have watched this webinar, uh, again, if you have questions, don't guess what to do. Always contact your instructions or contact uh, the customer service people that know the product the best. Uh, many of them, as you've learned, are techs, and they're there to help you. So again, everyone, have a wonderful day, and thank you again for joining us. Uh, Sarah, Brian, do you have any parting words? No, just thank you so much. We always appreciate the opportunity to share, and we look forward to seeing you at events this year. Very good. Thank you all.